YouTube. I'm Jay. This is my messy garage. I'm sitting on a Harley. That's a Pontiac 400 that I just finished building. You're about to see a video about this. No, I don't put everything in there that, you know, you need to know to do the job that I just did. Because I do a lot of cutting corners, sketchy stuff, you might say, that I learned from my old man. And, uh, it's only sketchy because it ain't what the pros do. I don't expect you to follow me on everything I do. You shouldn't have to. You should find out your own way, do it the way you want to do it. This is just how I do it. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have a fancy light, although I did get one for Christmas. Apparently everybody's pushing me into doing this, including family. Uh, I got many, many cars I'm going to be putting on here because it's winter time. I'm going to be doing a lot of the stuff on my own cars that I already have. You'll get to meet some of them and uh, the difference in each one and how each one is special to me in a different way. Uh, I don't know how this will work. People just told me I need to do it. So here I am. I don't have a fancy intro yet. I don't have none of that stuff because you know what? I don't know how to do it. I am computer stupid. Matter of fact, I'm holding the GoPro right now that I still have no idea. The functions are probably wrong. I'll probably get comments where they say, hey, you should do this, 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 and this, and that's great. I accept it. Because I have no clue. But hey, why not? We'll give it a shot, huh? Anyway, this is Jay. Please like and subscribe to the video if you see it. Welcome to Irish Outlaw Garage. Is that good? What the hell happened in here? You know, it just kind of, I must be like the Incredible Hulk or something. I just bought this motor yesterday. And here it is in pieces. Might have had something to do with that. Hmm. Well. Oh. Oh, yeah. You ain't allowed to see that yet. That's from another project. Whoops. So, the old Pontiac doesn't want to listen. I've got three exhaust manifold studs that decided they're not going to participate in my rejuvenation. So, we're going to learn her today. Well, maybe. Well, my little, you son of a gun. There we go. secret whenever you're doing this kind of thing is you want to make sure you destroy all the new parts that you put on and because they're so close you can see right there that plug here right next to where I'm supposed to be warming that's where the one I just did and I got this one down here I got to do and that one down there but I don't want to take the plugs out of there because then you, you know, you shoot fire up in your combustion chamber and who knows what kind of fuel I got sitting up inside. So that's what I'm dealing with. Got to get this one and this one out. And for some reason, it's just impossible from the bottom. So I'm, 
I had to take air conditioner off and all that crap. But I'm getting somewhere. I got that one out. It's uh, this is a this is a process. I really don't want to pull this motor, but if I have to, I have to. You know, Amber just have to drive a race car engine and a boat. It's uh, you know, she can be a daily driver. But we'll see. Here's what it takes to pull the motor to Pontiac. See if I can get it all in there. I gotta do it. Every single car. That's how I put take out motors. I don't have concrete. I like to torture myself. Why not? But it's out. Howdy, howdy. Part two of we're not pulling the motor out. We showed you pulled the motor out and you know it's got your regular mouse and rat infestation shit from you know whenever it sat in a swamp for 20 years but uh these are my favorite motors pontiac engines are my favorite they are just absolutely one of the best engines you know old school iron that was ever made and it don't matter 
from a 301 on up to a uh, 455 they're all the same block of course they had all the changes to make things cheaper and you know the the, the later model you get of them the worse the uh, the metal compound that they were made from and cast from uh, the 301 a lot of stuff won't fit on this one uh, because the head design small you had the turbo 301 which in my opinion was a piece of garbage but only because it had zero horsepower like none but they're hard to kill they're like the 307 old you can just beat the dog tar out of them they'll just keep on going that's kind of how these are like i said i could have i could have just as easily just you know fix that head you know and put her you know put her back together and ran it but i can't do that that just that just bothers me it was already happy enough it took me literally no time at all i got this thing running it was locked up but even though it was locked up other than the stuff that fell in it look at that valley this was a good motor low mileage but age of sitting and moisture coming in from the intake and the exhaust just tore to shreds so anyway there you go you can see it really ain't that bad in here for having sitting so long since i got the motor out you can see things power steering i just went ahead and cut them because i they were leaking and i'm probably gonna have to change that steering box while i got everything out i'm gonna redo the front end put a new uh you can see right there that was the core support and you know these battery box things like that but we'll just clean her up and paint her she'll make it Every car is worth saving. I don't care how rusty they are. Unless the frame's gone. But then you can use, you know. Then you can use parts off of it. And I'm going to I'm gonna put all new bushings up here and everything. While I got it apart. It's nice and light. Hell, I'll probably use an engine hoist just to pick it up. That's how I redid my Jeep. Or Amber's Jeep. So, I was able to save all the air conditioning stuff. And I made me a nice little mess over there. That'll sit there until winter, uh, winter's over. No. No, you gotta pull it hard. Keep going. All the way. Give it all you. Okay. Next one. Over here. Go. Keep going. Don't stop. Hold it tight. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Good job. Let me double check. All right, wheels. Give me some wheels. Wheels. You could do that one. So you grab one of them, one of them. Do it right there. Mmm, I don't like that. Put them up. Like that. And you put a washer. Like that. And uh, how about I get it started? And then you can put the other one in. You imitate. Okay? We'll get over here. Ding bat. Hold the wheel up there. Hold it flat. Again? No, against the metal. Ding dong. Like that. Now you gotta hold the wheel. There you go. You gotta hold it up there, two hands. This one goes here. This one goes here, like that. Now I'm going to get you another one in there, and then you put the rest of them in. Now I don't want to hold it. No, nope, you shouldn't have to. Okay, get you a bolt, that little lock washer, and then that. They're down there. You put the other two in. Just like these. Right here. Bolt. 
lock washer and a nut. Put them in from the bottom. And then you put the lock washer over the bolt, like this. You do that one. You do the bottom side. You just move this up. Oh, there you go. There you go. that through, put the lock washer on, and then the nut. I don't think I can put the nut. The nut too hard. He lost the nut. <laughs> Can't this <laughs> on. I got her? Yeah, I got it. Here you go. I'll hold the wrench. You run that. Grab hold. You get your fingers on it. We're going to do this one first. Hold on. Let me move it this way. There you go. I'll do it right there. This one first and that one. crap bolts boy they did all right that one all right, let's see the bottom one they gave us a piece of crap bolts imagine that made in china i can't hold it y'all hold it up there bud i can't hold it it's too heavy no it ain't put it right side up and just stick it on there there you go hit it well, you got to stand I up. Can't hold there you go. I can't hold it. <laughs> there you go, right there. Well, we'll call that good since we got Polish bolts. There you go. Oh. Well, that's just perfect. That son of a gun. Bad bolt. All right, over here, over here. You're gonna do this. You want me to do this one? Yeah. I'm gonna have to change all these bolts at one time. These are junk. Well, every single one of them, man, you can't believe. Well, that angers me. There. Okay. This goes here. Like a soap. Yeah, that's with a big soap. Ah. This goes in here. I don't know what that's for. They don't fit anything. It's always good to have leftover parts. Okay, I need them holders and black things right there. What black things? Right there by your feet. This? Yep. <laughs> okay, you can get the paper off the other ones. Not necessarily liking that crap. 
finger. I don't like that at all. Who the hell? That's just. Oh, I can just slide them out. Yeah. These aren't very good bolts. You trust them? I don't trust them. But we're going to do it anyway. Well, that's just really so these bolts. Well, this motor could have had a bit of a timing issue. Uh, I got it all apart. Yeah. By the way. This thing is all original. It has the factory paint on the crank, everything. I just went through and marked all the cylinders, which by the way, I marked them completely wrong because actually number one is over here on a Pontiac. But for some reason, piston one is on this side. I don't care. I went by line. Well, First piston, second piston, third piston. Just bad news. Right on down. Got her all apart. So, I decided to run the home through these two. Right there. If you look, that is one hell of a pit. That must be where the piston sat. Well, it sat for years and years and years. And there's another one. About the same place. That, my friends, means she is needing a good bore. And that's really unfortunate because this crank and these rod bearings looked fantastic. They're wet right now because I had some, you know, but my God. That's just, that's tragic. God dang tragic. Don't let your car sit. If you are not going to do anything with it, don't give me this, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to jump on that later. I'm going to redo that someday, blah, blah, blah. And you don't know shit about anything. Do not let it sit. This motor was all original. Everything I took off it was Pontiac, including the camshaft. Unbelievable. So now it's got to get bored. So it's just tragic. Don't let your damn car sit. My God. Well, dropped the crank off at a buddy's. They're going to go to town on it. Nothing wrong with it. It's like I said. Uh, can't say so much for the block, but I honed it a little bit. And I checked it. It seems to be okay. There's a couple spots, but I think this is enough. It'll work itself out of it. It's got some bad scoring right there. But, you know, this isn't going to be something that's running eight second quarters or anything like that but it is pretty significant i know i know people are going to look at it and say what are you doing and i'm going to say well it'll get me down the road or get amber down the road until i decide what we want to do if we want to find a new engine or pull it again and get it bored but it's pretty smooth i mean it ain't like it's i mean there ain't a big jump in your finger but and i'm probably doing the wrong thing but hey like i said i've never had an engine fail been doing it since i was 12 years old so i think there's a point where you know budget is budget and on a pontiac and a 
Oldsmobiles and stuff like that. There is no such thing as a budget. Don't let don't let a, you know let anybody fool you. There is no budget on a Pontiac or a Buick or a, they're just they're just ain't. So the only budget you can do is to cut corners that won't exactly kill the engine. We we'll just have to see. I looked at the rings on that cylinder and they looked fine. So I don't know. I don't know. I should probably do the right thing and take it and have it bored and buy pistons and all that, but dang, then you look up pistons for a Pontiac 30 over. Tell me what you find. I shouldn't cut corners. And knowing me, I'll think about it and I probably won't, but it's just I really don't want to spend that kind of money right now but i know she really wants to drive this car so we'll see i don't know is what it is yeah 400 pontiac build just took it outside and pressure washed the hell out of it and it's a little worn you know on the center walls um, I did take a, take a stone hone to it, you know, a little bit, and I took my, my dingle ball, and I just got it all cleaned up, all the gasket <clears throat> surfaces clean, everything cleaned out in the motor, and took some WD-40 and sprayed down the cylinders, and, uh, she didn't turn out too bad, she's decently clean. I mean, it, there's some spots. Yeah, a little bit of flash rust there, but I ain't done yet. I just want to make sure she don't rust rust. It wasn't bad. Spray the hell out of WD-40. Still need to clean up the garage, but I get so involved in doing this now that I don't want to do that. Because I got to get to those yet. Oh boy. Well, anyway, I'm deciding what to do here. I don't know, I might go with some different heads. Maybe some aluminum, something like that. We'll see. Yeah, this is no way as clean as it's going to be when I put it together. I'm just a uh, little bit by little bit, and of course, I got to spray it all back down so she don't rust. But. Yeah, so Dixie approves. I uh, was out here cleaning my garage so I could start working on this 400 build for Amber's Pontiac. And I was looking at the heads and I knew I had to get some studs extracted because, again, it's drills and taps and I just, that ain't happening. It ain't happening. So I figured I'd check the valves and everything out while I had it had them off and before I decide what I'm going to do and it, it didn't take me long to figure out what I was going to do. So this is exhaust valve. I don't know which one cylinder wise. I didn't even look. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter but spring and keepers and everything the keepers are on there they weren't coming off i had to slap them with a hammer with my giving the old elka bong treatment but uh this exhaust valve was sticking and then i got to looking at the basically the bottom of the exhaust valve i mean i think i could do the redneck cleanup on the valves themselves but uh look at the taper and the wear on the base of that valve stem and then i looked in the you know the exhaust port and that sucker looked like it had 
115,000 tons of carbon on it. I know that ain't, there's no way that that's how them are made. But, wow. Intake. Mm, wasn't bad. Wasn't bad at all. But, believe it or not, it had the oil seals on it, which is hard to believe. Again, this one here, though. She shot. Done. This one here is so far gone that there ain't no way I could clean this up. It is just this thing. I I've built hundreds of engines and I've always been able to kind of use, reuse things. I like doing things the cheap way because that's how I was raised, but wow. She just, this motor was worn out. I am so glad that I pulled this thing because, man, Amber Rose would have been very angry if it were to drop or broke one of these valves or it's stuck or so I'm going to look into it a little more but I'm pretty sure these things are just gone I've got a set of 4X heads off a of 2 barrel 400 that I got right behind us here that was just those two those weren't the worst ones. I don't know. I don't know. And I sure as hell ain't spending $1,200 per head for some slip-ons. Ready to rock out of rocks. If I'm going to do that, this thing's going, getting tanked and getting bored. And we're going to find a different motor for Amber Rose's Pontiac because I'm not going to put a hopped up, you know, expensive ass engine in that car. For her to just let sit and if I'm building that much there's no way I, I probably will I'll probably just do it and that way she's got a really good engine and it's a rare car I have to keep saying that got a hold of a Pontiac guy and he said there's probably one of a handful like it out of the 120 made and he's a Pontiac guy and he said it's probably one of a handful so <sighs> it's only money right what the hell it's just money it is what it is hello again it's day five million and two hundred and twenty five of working on Amber Rose's car I called off work tonight, so I have to stay up. So I thought, well, you know what, I'll tear into this thing. I'll get these heads, you know, ready to go. Shouldn't have to do anything with them. Uh, yeah, uh, one of the things was cracked. Exhaust port was cracked, so yeah, I need new heads. And I found a guy out in Washington. Got to know him pretty good, actually, because we've been chatting back and forth about everything. So I've got a set of 4X heads off a motor that the guy said, oh, it just had a little bit of a rod knock. The rest of the motor was good. I, I you know, I, uh, so I'm gonna try to clean that up a bit. I did get the heads off of it. I'm gonna try to clean that up a bit. Um, I don't know. I think if I got a set of heads, this might be a runner. I'll just clean that up. And get a little bit down in there. Hell yeah, he was right. This is a runner. Good. That ought to do it, right? Brake rejuvenation stuff. Is that what it's called? Good stuff. Anyway, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Gotta love everyone. But on the good side, <clears throat> yeah, they look like shit. But, uh, they're 4X heads. 
these are 15s, old school 15s. Right there is where she cracked, right in there. I had all that ready to tap out, and then I just pulled some old gasket material off and saw the crack, so I worked my butt off for nothing. But anyway, yeah, we'll just, uh, you know, 50, 60 cans of this shit. I think, I think we'll be good. But I will have to clean them up a little bit, but <clears throat> this, ladies and gentlemen, I would say used Pennzoil or Quaker State and probably religiously used Fram filters. One of these days I'll do a video on what happened when I was 16, 17 years old. Grew up in a parts store and the Fram guy come in and I was already racing cars and building engines by that point. And I told him he could take his product and you know, just walk right up back to the car. That's, that's the nice way I put it. Um, but boys and girls use use good oil don't use that that crap get you some Valvoline Haviland uh, I use Rotella shell you know religiously and if you got these hot rods and they ain't got a roller system on them you know your cam and lifters and all that crap you need to put a zinc additive in there and when they say 3,000 miles they mean 3,000 miles change your damn all public service announcement but anyway I'm gonna try to get these cleaned up otherwise I gotta buy a set of heads I did however get this I got on the old Facebook and I found a nice couple up in uh, Wisconsin who had an original Holly Street Dominator intake never installed bought in 1980 for his 1974 Formula 400 Firebird. Never used him. He's had him this long. Look at this thing. Look at that. That is true late 70s, early 80s freaking Holly Street Dominator. Okay. And with that, I got this. Now, it's nothing you know just you're gonna you know pop wheelies on a saturday night with especially in that boat but this thing's gonna give her a little bit of torque this is an original stock 1980 crane cam gripper torque camshaft that's back when they had the fireball and the blazer you know you got these fancy cam names and that's when everybody would just crazy oh my god i gotta have the fireball and by the way they were boy they sounded great but yeah this is an original check that out this nice couple up in wisconsin had that with the lifters the lifters got a little bit of surface on them a little bit of surface rust but i think i can get that out of there it's nothing major um i am going to take this up to my buddy dean up at effingham or grinding and i'm going to have him put it on to check it make sure it's straight you know get the actual um, grind that it is because they say advertise that ain't never right the nice thing about this cam is is it's old school metal this ain't that crap that they're making nowadays so I think this is gonna be a great fit for this car because I'm not gonna be putting headers or anything on it it's not gonna be you know ramping and you know burnouts well it might be doing burnouts I, I won't say that but it'll have enough torque to do it this this is a good old cam Howard's and another company I believe Summit is making one that's really similar but Howard's makes this exact one but this is the original crane cam grind this is a it's a gripper it's pretty damn cool it took me some finding to get me on the internet to try to find them the uh, actual grind but then when he sent it to me because I was going to buy it anyway because I was I wanted that street dominator but he sent me this with and I paid $240 for both of these uh, I know it sounds like a lot of money but if you're into doing things like I'm doing that right there 
is 300 and some odd dollars by itself. Back in the 80s, I guarantee it was 250, you know, 300 and some dollars. They don't even make those anymore. So I did pretty good. I did real good. This head thing though, I'm gonna try to clean these up and it's cold as hell out right now and that's why you hear the noise of that. Uh, sorry about that, but I'm actually gonna have to wait till tomorrow because I'm gonna have to get these out and let it warm up a little bit and get the pressure washer on and get that fram waste off of the top of that motor and you know off the top of the, the heads so it's getting there it's g damn getting there and i hope this turns out i'm gonna get the nice pretty paint i'm gonna make this thing look really nice i'm more worried about how it runs that's my deal but i think when you see it come to find out this car is probably one of five out of the 120 made this is one of five that's like it and in the world so when, when amber gets her out there and she's showing it and you know she's having a good time and she she can't wait that's why she lets me sit out here and work and work and work if it was my damn car i'd be getting it you know to no end why aren't you in here with the kids blah 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 she ain't said a word i've been out here for over a month she ain't said a word <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to get these heads cleaned up tomorrow. Um, I should have my crank back tomorrow or the next day. And he said it's perfect. There's nothing. Uh, I searched the internet. I, you know, I did the Summit and the Jags. I love both. I use both. I use my local O'Reilly's. I use my local Dustin Sons Auto Supplies. They, they, you know, I grew up in this place, so I try to get from them use everybody i can uh but i actually got on evil bay and i did really really well my entire parts list right now without having to get heads i still got to get uh those cleaned up uh, and i got to pay to get that crank and he's just going to put the cam on this on his roller and check it for me he's not going to charge me for that and won't take him very long um I think all in all right now, you're looking at about maybe a thousand dollars in parts. And I don't need anything else. Is I if I you know if that comes out okay, everything goes well, I get these heads cleaned up, everything I need for those heads I have here. Uh, I'm old school valve grinder, you know. Nice thing is is we can do it with a drill now, we don't do it like dad did with the suction cup and um, the block looks okay. I mean, it could be better, but the cross hatch is perfect. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be about a thousand dollars ish. And like I said, man, I, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. If you're if you're doing a Pontiac motor or an Olds or a Buick, there's no such thing as budget unless your budget is spend whatever the hell you can to get it running. And if, if you want to do it yourself you can budget it but if you're going to let somebody else build it good luck because there's one of these sitting on you know on the facebook it's all redone stock everything except for a little bit of a mild cam kind of like what i'm doing 4800 bucks there is no such thing as a budget pontiac buick or oldsmobile built they're just saying i'm not, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and everything I do is cutting corners because that's the way I was taught. But everything I've done to cut corners works. I, I've never had one blow up. So I've never had anything go wrong other than a, hmm. I had a comp cams set up that went bad and it wasn't my fault. It was a bad thing of lifters and I caught it in time. It didn't ruin the cam, thank God. But anyway, that motor, junk. All I want was the heads. Uh, but I'll sell you a, a 400 Pontiac for $1,000, guaranteed. You just put it right Super in late. Again, I gotta stay up all night because I work nights. I build roads. But uh, I got these 4X heads apart. And uh, they're, they're nasty. But all the services look good sat flat and it was 
well torqued. There wasn't anything loose. I did get them all apart. I didn't bother you with that because, you know, I'm old school. But these bastards work great. Love them. But uh, I had one particular valve here. And I got a picture of it I may show you. But uh, this right here was built up all the way to about right here. There was nothing but carbon. The whole valve from here to here was this big chunk of carbon about that wide. I know, crazy. But, believe it or not, the surface looks actually okay. I might be able to grind them out. I know, you're going to say, what the hell? Why not bring it in and give it a valve job? Number one, most places don't even do them anymore. And if they do, they charge you an arm and leg. Uh, and on top of that, it's like weeks and weeks and weeks because they got one guy that can do it, you know. So I'm going to do it the old school way. I'm just going to get him to clean up as best I can, make sure they're good and greased and oiled and get new seals. And, but yeah, it's just bad. The heads are good. It's just really, really bad maintenance. Stay away from fram filters, but that and you need to like, you know, change your damn oil. This was bad. No wonder the rod was knocking it. I'm gonna try to take that apart while I got it. And I'll save that block. Maybe that one I'll send off and get built. You know, I'll get it bored and I'll I'll make her a freaking monster because these Pontiac motors they are a monster if you build it right kind of like an old build they're ridiculous but anyway I thought I'd show you that valve and I did get these apart and sometime tomorrow after I decide to take my fat ass out of bed I'm gonna get the pressure washer out and I'll clean them up anywho you guys have a good morning so I got one head done uh, this other one is just, it's friggin' nasty. Um, I've been digging shit out with a little screwdriver. I do have some little, um, some little brushes that you can put on your, you know, you can either use it by hand or you got the, the drill you can put them on, but I got them pretty well. They still got to get final cleaning, but I, uh, the other head turned out pretty good and I've already done all the valves on this other head. Uh, what it is, all you need is your stuff here, your valve grinding compound, a drill, the battery's charging because I've done wore it out, your head, your valves, make sure you see that I got the marks on it. So, you know, this is the front of the head. That's the valves in line. Uh, I did get them, I still got to clean it up, you know, clean them up better I soaked them in my uh, I soaked this whole head in my damn parts washer and diesel and yes I did say diesel but uh yeah final clean on these but I did get most of the crud and oil and junk and all that crap and believe it or not the, the valve seats actually turned out pretty good and how I do that is is I don't, you know, I don't know how you guys do it, but let's say we got our exhaust, our exhaust valve here. You can see it's pretty clean. And what I do is, is I open that up and I'll go like this and just get a little oil on that end, flip it over, and I'll put me that rubbing compound all the way around this edge. And that way it's, you know, good and soaked in. And you come down here, you stick it through, and it comes out, you know, out your guide. And you hook your drill to it, and you just barely run it in and out about half speed. Just do do do, you know, and then check it. And if it looks like it used up most of the compound, then you just uh, put a little bit more while you still got it in there, and do it a little bit more, and then uh, check it and clean them off. You gotta remember something guys that as long as you got a good seat 
I'm one of the believes that the, eventually, like my dad said, eventually the motor is going to tell you what it wants. And every time I've done it this way, it's worked. Every single time. I've never had one problem with my valve train. Nothing. Um, it works. I mean, it's cheap. It's not the way you're supposed to do it. But it works. So can't be that crazy. I haven't had any problems at all. Um, this, you know, make sure you oil up your valve before you stick it through there. You don't want to go tearing the hell out of it inside that thing. But yeah, I'm a, I'm out of brake clean. I uh, didn't grab enough, so I gotta, I gotta get some of that. Cause what I do is before I final put it together, I spray down the whole thing of brake clean, blow it off, make sure all the gasket surfaces are good, and then I'll, uh, I'll oil it up, stick it through, stick your damn. Uh, oil seal on it and then put my springs and keepers on and all that stuff um, but yeah I mean they're okay I think once I get a good shot of brake clean on it and get something dry or you can use mineral spirits just don't smoke around that I smoke and that's not a good idea if you're gonna do that um, but yeah you know this is a long process I'm telling you right now if you're gonna do this get you some beers get you the oil get you some music going tell the old lady and the kids you'll see them in a day because you're going to be out here forever doing this because it's a long process it's dirty but you know what you're saving so much money by not going and getting your valves done by some shop that you know you can spend that money on gears or you know whatever else you need why would you if you can do it yourself it's dirty it's time consuming but i just kind of have the time because it's nighttime and I have to stay up till like four or five in the morning so I'm ready for Sunday night when I go back to work so that's that but yeah it's uh it's coming along these heads were nasty but when you're done this one's wet because I soaked it down with fog and oil but the fog and oil just keeps it from surface rusting but look at that and every one of them has oil in them yes it has oil on the valve oil everywhere it does not matter it'll burn off at startup and everything turned out pretty good so those are the old heads can't use them because one's cracked and believe it or not they're actually the same chamber same valves it's just this one's more into the smog era you know like a 74 these are 74 heads those are 68 but they're damn near exactly the same thing got the pressed studs that's you know it is what it is i'm, I'm not going to complain about it like i said this isn't a race car so yeah all right and that's that take care back a few things we missed i had to go run and do a few errands pick up another car uh, unfortunately it's too cold this ain't one that i have that i was going to get running driving home uh, that one there i can't really tell you what it is yet until it comes out because it's kind of a secret um, anyway i got the heads done for the pontiac the the uh, 4X heads turned out okay, even as bad as that block was. I, it took a lot of shit with a screwdriver and a brush and a, you know, but I got them cleaned up. I didn't have to hot tank them. Ran a straight edge across them. They seemed good. Didn't see no cracks and see nothing. So I had to use some of the parts off the old ones. Uh, the, well, they're all old, but uh, as old as I am. But uh, I had to use some of the parts off the 15s that I had, but they're all the same. Same everything I use the valves though off of those heads so everything should match up pretty well uh, anyway I got those together I may show you them in a minute but I started to I got all my parts got my crank back it's perfect standard nothing wrong with it just cleaned it up a little bit 65 bucks I already have the bearings I have everything I need to put it together 
So I thought, first I'm gonna install the cam bearings. Got the block all cleaned up and everything. Start installing the cam bearings. Bought these here Durabonds. You know, typical. That's, you know, they're all the same size on a Pontiac and Olds. You know, there's no tapers or, you know, where it goes in and tapers off like some other ones. And I got them pretty well. And I got them in there centered just absolutely perfect. I mean, you can look down that hole. I mean, if you want me to show you how to do it, I'll do it. But there's plenty of videos out there. Uh, I don't know if what happened here. But I, uh, I got them all installed. Okay. Take this here. This is the one I had in number two number two journal going from the front of the motor back okay we'll put this on here like this and you know this is a rough estimate but I'd right, show you this okay see that right there what that says I believe that says like 1901 somewhere around there doesn't it yeah, 1900 but if you can see the dot, it's 1.9 inches. I can switch it to millimeters if you want. I, I don't care. You know, 1.9. Remember that. Here is the one I had in my, oh, if I can get it in there straight. Dang it. side of the very first one I put in there and when I mean that these things fit tight they fit tight all the other ones are the 19 or 1.9 or 1.91 this one depending on where you grab it is under 19 everywhere completely everywhere I couldn't get the cam in it was out around not really so much out around as I believe that somebody put in oversized if I can read that right I did it but P three two P three two so they're exactly the same except this one was cut wrong this is the first time and i checked it all the way around it it's the same it's smaller all the way around where these were all perfect the other three that i put in perfect i've been building it since i was 12 13 14 15 i, I don't remember i'm too old to remember way too many drinks since then um, this is the first time this has ever happened to me I've never had to go through every little bearing like that I've never had to well first time for everything so I done checked my new ones uh, went to the O'Reilly's ordered me some new Clevites they're basically the same It's I think the same company makes all of them hell I don't know but anyway, the, the, the folks down in Louisiana, and I'll get you the name of the place that I got these from, I had told them about it, and I said, you know, it's my own problem, this is my fault, but I'm letting you know that you didn't get a stock of bearings, and one of them was wrong. And they refunded my money for this, and I did not ask them to, I was not gonna make them. And I'll, uh, I'll talk about them more after a while, because that's where I got my bearings, my piston rings, that's where I got everything. And they, the, the guy treated me really, really good, and uh, I'll be making sure that I buy more parts. Of it. There's not a lot of places anymore that would have done something like that. I already had them installed, but uh, anyway, I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna get these cam bearings in, and hopefully this time around I can install my camshaft because then it's 
it's on. Once I got that on, the crank's sitting right here. It's perfect. I got everything I need to put it back together. Oh, except for a new oil pan that I ordered. Uh, I'm waiting on an oil pan. I'm waiting on my fancy valve covers. You know, that's that's not me, though. That's for Amber. Uh, air cleaner, stuff like that, and a new fuel pump. So once all that comes in, then, you know, I'll bring me up some way to start this thing. And I'll break in those rings and cams and lifters and everything in. I'll break it all in 20 to 20. 200 rpms with the exhaust is pointing right out the door neighbors love me around here <laughs> anyway on to this damn thing again sorry about the noise it's cold outside you know that time of year but uh i did get the cam and everything in cam berries worked out good she's a little tight just a little tight but i think that's just because it was a uh, all original block and but she spins around pretty good i mean i uh i got the crank in it and the gears and all that happy shit that crap whatever she ain't bad got the piston soaking i uh i like using like the Stable and some kind of bargain oil. Spray it on anything that can flash rust or get anything. I got me some Lucas Assembly Lube and all that crap because uh, I got some of that old stuff. My old black bottle. I think we use this. But, yeah. I know it's dirty in here, but it's carpet, so nothing's gonna happen. But, uh, yeah, she's, she spins around, but it's smooth, it's tight and smooth. I like it. Fun fact about Pontiac, that if you, most people who do timing, if you want to know how to do timing, look it up. But you can see, there's a dot, and there's one on your crank gear right here right yeah where to go where to go where to go right there right there you got one there one there Pontiac if you want it to sit in the natural position on the distributor unlike others you line them up 12 and 12 or it doesn't matter you can run it around to 6 and 12 you just your distributor be 180 off if you try to put it in the number one position of the natural side you know like a bit of a tad no i put it back where it's supposed to be just because you know but that's where it should be and I like to keep things natural, but now she spins over good. So, I did have one piston that's kind of, I had a couple of them, the rings were stuck, but I don't know. I'm just going to, I'm just going to let them soak. We'll clean them up a little bit later. Yeah, I didn't have this, you know, here not too long ago. They were got me that for Christmas last year. I did everything with a little 454. Uh, I did everything with brake clean and basically a wire wheel on my drill. I've been doing like that for years. And I finally bought a bench grinder. Of course, I'm a cheap bastard and I bought the cheapy and now she's, uh, I don't know. It's okay. It does the job. It's better than getting my fingers and my phalanges all tore the hell up using this freaking thing, you know. Plus, I got a battery that stays up. Um, anything else? I mean, I got something outside that I'm working on. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> 
but I can't say what it is until it's done. That'll give away the surprise. So, this one's going on 400. I got one. I got one piston that is just absolutely. I don't know. I may have to. I may have to replace one piston. I hate to put one in there. It's got a little bit of pitting on it, but then again, one piston for these is. You know, unless you want to get a piece of crap. I'm going to buy something. I ain't getting no piece of crap. I said the main part that I needed to get done today is in. We'll get the rest of it in soon. Um, I hope to anyway. Got updates. Anyway. We've been working on this 400 okay. Pontiac for Amber's ambulance slash hearse, whatever you want to call it, corners car way too big for the road and her and uh, I got all the pistons in got everything in she's tight little bit taut and I like it a lot it uh, it turns over nicely but it has uh, you know that resistance you think you would need in a, this motor don't have a lot of miles on it fresh rings fresh home fresh cam chains this thing this ain't gonna run. She gonna run good. But uh, I got some head bolts soaking. I'm gonna clean them up so I can put my new heads that is busted my butt on to get to get done. Got the oil pump on. You know, I, I could put a video of me doing all this. There's 50 gazillion on there on how to do this, and every one of them is gonna be different. Believe it or not, I'm going in this like I know nothing. I don't know anything I'm doing. And I actually had a little bit, I had a little bit of trouble getting the damn uh, fuel pump eccentric. That right there. For all of you that don't know, this runs your fuel pump. It comes in the side and pumps it up to your carburetor. And uh, runs off your cam right there. And this, this cam that I got off them people, that sucker fits tight. And it is, it's just, you can tell it's old school made the way they're supposed to be made. But uh, yeah, I think she looks pretty good. I put this in there because on Pontiacs, if you're not careful, you will pull that down Basically, your drive shaft for your oil pump runs off the cam off the bottom of here, and there's a rod in there. And unlike everybody else, the little Pontiac screw up is they don't have anything to hold it in there. So when I go pull this out, it could pull out the whole damn thing. So I just kind of set that in there because I'm gonna put the heads on it, and then I'm gonna have to flip it over and get the pan and all that. And I may be doing that a little backwards, but I. You know, I want to make sure everything up here is perfect. I've already cleaned the surfaces and got them good and dry. Once I clean those bolts, I'm going to put the heads on it. Makes it hard to turn over, but, you know, I'm, I'm doing this the way I've always done it, and it's never done me wrong. Um, boy, I sure made a mess in here. I had it nice and clean. Did get my welder out, and you have to... Uh, on these Pontiacs this here right here your screen that goes into your pump they don't have like a bolt-in system which is crazy but you know they work so what you have to do is, is you get it in there set and it's got a spot that it sits and that's where it's supposed to sit and then you just give her a little well just tip tip and that holds that sucker in place. And hopefully, because I completely forgot, I got the new oil pan in the house. I should have come out here and checked it, but you know what, I can I can still check it. That's, okay, yeah, yeah, 
I screwed that up, but they put that notch on that oil pump for a reason, so I'm sure it's just absolutely fine. So, anyway, you know, she looks good. I didn't get my brass ones in from Jags, they're on back order, so I put the ones that I got off the Evil Bay on there. And I was looking at all of them. Those are the only ones, those three on this side and the three on that side are the only three I needed to change. Um, I plan on building that other 400 and it needs them. It needs everything. That thing is terrible. Change your oil. Don't use Fram. Make sure you put zinc in it if you don't have a roller system in it. If you're not sure, put zinc in it anyway. But, yeah, she looked pretty good. Nice and clean. Did that all here, no hot tanking. You can do it. You just got, you know, it's manual labor. So, anyway. So take care. Let me get these heads on. Time to, you know, bye. Morning. It's about 2.30 in the morning. I uh, got most of this thing together, but I'm not real happy. I hate non-adjustable rockers. And this is an engine that has them. And the cam and lifters and everything. Of course, the lifters ain't pumped up. You know, they don't have any oil in them. I do have it covered up because... No, I got, you know, nitty gritty. I don't need no dirt. But, uh, I just don't like that. And these are non-adjustables. And this is typical, believe it or not, of when you put a cam in a Pontiac that is not stock. I read up and read up and read up and, well, it seems that I'm going to have to do a couple of different things to remedy this. One, you get hardened washers to go underneath your lock nuts, but you also run the risk of, you know, taking it, you know, giving it too much, taking, you know, making her too tight, layman's terms, to where it you know, it hurts your, your system, your entire valve train. So, the other option is, uh, I think it's ARP and I think Mr. Gasket, which they used to make good stuff. I don't know if they still do, but they make a poly lock system that you can put on these studs. And that way you can make them adjustable. So, I may have to go that route. But, for now, I'm just going to leave it alone. Hoping maybe once them lifters get pumped up with oil that everything will be fine. Because this thing ain't, you know, motor didn't have a lot of miles on it. I didn't change any of the deck heights. I didn't change nothing. Just got a bigger cam. You'd think that it would be tighter. But it's not. They feel exactly the way they were when I took them apart. And, you know, I checked my, my lift and everything is fine. I... As far as the valve opening and closing, everything's good there. I'm just thinking maybe they need to pump up, but we'll see. I'll get it running. We start hearing something, I'll shut her down, and we'll say, yeah, we're going to change that. But it went together pretty good. I'm just kind of continually putting stuff in it. You put oil in it, let it run out, cover it up, and that'll anything that's in there, dirt and shit like that, get it out of there we don't need it but they get that in there too kind of sucks with this engine stand it don't sit high enough like my my one that the 454 is on and i also noticed that there is no way in hell i don't think that i'm going to even be able to cut these off and use this to start this motor in. So I may have to do a swap. Take that one out of there. Drop it and put one in here. So I don't know. 
I don't know. I guess we'll find out, won't we? Till next time. Howdy-ho. When I'm not working on motors, I build roads. I'm usually doing this shit at night, but you see over there. Kenworth W900 Big kitty cat I'm usually working nice and I have no idea what the hell that thing is but we need to bring it down It's too bright Criminy End of a job Yay, and we have to haul asphalt no more So that I had to come to a Verizon store. Why do you go to Verizon store? That's where you go after you drop your phone out of your truck and smash the screen. Yeah, that kind of day. Monday. Of course, Verizon is completely out of phones. And now I'm trying to take my broken ass phone to get on the internet to file a claim so they can, you know, ship me one out next day. can't happen with this equipment. That's alright. Whatever. I'm going to leave my phone anyway. Captain's log. It's uh, cold outside. I have the heater thing blowing, but there's no heat coming out of it yet. Because I have the door open and I'm blowing air out because I am this far. Take her off. Put the old valve covers on just to cover it because I ain't got my new ones in yet. But uh she's uh she's getting there. She's doing the paint. That is like the prettiest engine color ever. The 370s. Yeah, I think they did it like 70 or 71. They use this color and it's just it's gorgeous. It really is. But uh um, I did a whole lot of cleaning, got her together. I still ain't real sure about my valve train. I don't like how that's sitting, but I did a bunch of research and I found a way to get around that. So I'll be fixing that too. That'll be after startup. Everything went together pretty good. Nice and tight. She spins nice and tight, smooth. So. Hopefully my engine skills are still good and I got this sucker set up and ready to roll. I do have to get one more plug for right there. I only have one, dang it. But, you know, that's, that's no big deal. That's my filter that I bought for my cutlass to change the oil in. But hey, it spun on and fit the thing perfectly. Good for paint. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's looking pretty smooth, man. Anyway, hopefully, here in, in the very near future, I'll be starting this old girl. Right here in the garage, on a stand. I don't, uh, I don't see why not. I'll fill a full antifreeze, start her up, that way she's good for the winter. And, well, if it stays the way it is now, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put the thing in the car because why not it's going to stay nice out so anyway peace out hey ho yeah she's ready to start but uh i didn't get my valve covers in like i was supposed to so i just got the old ones sitting on it if i have to i'll clean them up and just put her in the way she sits I did convert my new engine stand into a start stand, which pretty much means I take these and turn them wrong side out because I don't need to spin them no more. Yeah, I could cut them off, but why? It's just easier. Just turn them so the flywheel can sneak through. Put the flywheel all on there. Got my distributor all on there. Yeah, it looks like crap. That ain't staying, but 
red on blue. No. Yeah. Gotta take this off. And carburetor going on it. And got the gauges and everything to set her up and how I do that and I'll show it I have this here on the stand and I'll make me something I'll make sure that it don't want to move too far I'll maybe sometimes I'll take something there and I'll strap it down to here that way it don't have a lot of give it just kind of sits there and then I'll take my engine hoist and I'll mount my radiator on it and a fan on the motor and a fan in front of that and it it works. So I did my Cutlass. So I did the. Uh, so I did the Malibu. So I did all these. I mean, yeah, I'd really love to have a fancy engine stand. But you either get a really cheap piece of shit that won't last, or you know won't hold. It just this is safer, actually. It, it's to me it is because. The only ones that are really worth a damn, they cost like twenty-five to five thousand dollars, and I don't need to be putting that. Here. This is these are motors for myself. I used to build them for derby guys and stuff like that. But I told them I wasn't going to do it no more. If they're going to keep derby and old iron, I ain't building your motors for you. Plenty of old cop cars and them crappy ass Fords and Mercury's you can go out there and derby. You don't need to be derby and old iron. And a lot of my derby friends don't talk to me no more, but. Hey, it's just how I feel. You go ahead and do what you want to do, but I just think it's wrong. There ain't that much out there anymore, man. I've seen them just completely tear down one time. A beautiful Buick Riviera. It was in great shape. Man, that'd be a great derby car. He lasted two minutes in his first heat, destroyed the frame. That well, was worth it, wasn't it, dumbass? But anyway, hopefully here in the next day or two, I'll get this thing running right here on the stand. And I'll show it. Neighbor's gonna love this. Twenty, you know, two thousand twenty-five hundred RPMs, just screaming. Pontiac power right out the fucking door, and uh, you know, that's my niece across the street. And they don't ever talk to me, so I'll just blow the exhaust fumes that way. But anyway, man, take care. And then the day comes. Got it on the stand. Start it. She runs pretty good. Sits at the idle, the oil pressure is supposed to. Although, I'm gonna have to take the pan back off because the rear main seal is garbage. I hate rope seals, it is what it is. I'm gonna order the, the good seal for it. I'm already sick and tired of this. I ain't doing this again. I had the same damn thing happen on my old deal. I ain't had a problem out of it since, but, uh, she don't do too bad. <clears throat> battery's a little, battery's junk. Ten pounds per thousand RPM. Pontiac's run a little low. Kind of scared me. But I did a bunch of research, and that's about where she's supposed to be. The cold will be about forty, something like that. So, but I got to tear back into this thing, get that rear main changed out. Yay! More work. Runs good though. See ya. Well, got everything tore down. Um, other than just getting that rear main seal done, that's that's nothing. I did that before, so I'll just do it again. 
one of these days I'll learn my lesson on that that I am awful awful at rope seals that I can handle everything else but that you know I'm about as good as those as you know the current resident of the White House is with economy and well anything for that matter but that's a whole nother story but yeah she's uh she's a runner um fact of the matter is I when they run that good you know other than the little little things like I said uh, the rear main seal she did real good well that's a thing of accomplishment for me I'm like a few things I'm good at and that's <laughs> frankly being an asshole um, drums and building these I like building old iron these are uh, getting to be a dying breed everybody wants to throw LS swap this LS swap that and I don't know I like to keep things natural Make them sound like old school. Just a good running engine. And Pontiacs are. Pontiacs are one of the best built engines ever. There's very few flaws. Um, you know, I, I... I don't know. I don't, I don't really know how to explain how I feel about these motors. It's these and the Oldsmobile engines are my favorite. The next would be a small block Ford. I mean, Chevys, yeah, you can, I'm, I'm pretty sure my six-year-old could build a Chevy. I mean, it's just, a, I like the challenge of learning. Um, this is only the second 400 that I've ever built, or Pontiac motor. Um, but yeah, she's a, she's a good one. She's going to be as soon as I get my, the pretty stuff's for Amber, though. That ain't for me. I could care less. I wouldn't even have painted it, probably. I just made it look the way it is. Well, it was when I cleaned her up, you know, but can't because you can get surface rust and all that. <clears throat> but we get my valve covers and I got that, I got an 850 Pro Form carburetor is what I'm putting on that. Um, be a little bit better suited for this. Either that or I might take that 750 I got on my Cutlass and put, put that on here and I'll take that Pro Form and I'm going to make a video of me. I'm going to put a tunnel ram on that cutlass. And I might put that 850 on it. That'll give it a little more, more flow with them big runners. But, uh, yeah, it makes me happy to have these run. Because anymore, anything I do is, you know, they're special. I don't, uh, I don't build for anyone anymore. I, I just kind of do for myself or my friends and family. Uh, they're what's most important to me is the small circles that I run I they seem to appreciate it when I do stuff like this and Amber wouldn't say it but it's the day after Christmas and yesterday I was outside with her mother and uh, she said that she said that Amber called her and said mom the motor's running, he got it running, and it sounds so good. That kind of stuff makes me happy. Even if she won't tell me that. She did come out here and say, oh, it's pretty. She didn't say, you know, good job, but that's just Amber. She don't, uh, she don't throw that out a lot. But, uh, yeah. We'll just get that rear main seal in it, all the, the pretty crap on it. I'm gonna get that transmission in here and that thing shifted and ran great so I'm just gonna put a new kit in it uh, filter kit new seals I'm putting it right back in the way she came I'll probably paint it you know but um, I have a few little cosmetic things uh, that do affect mechanical parts of that car that I'm gonna fix uh, you know nothing major a couple pieces of metal here and there I won't even weld them. I'll just use self tappers, like for um, it needs the uh, core support is rusted out, but the mount is still there. So I'm just gonna 
finagle something. I may do a video on that or something. Little things like that. But I am happy that this thing ran great. That was a lot of work. These heads took me the most work because they were just nasty. But hey, she's running on all cylinders. All the temperatures look great on every exit of the, you know, your exhaust ports. And I think she's ready. Other than that, stupid shit. But yeah. You know, if there's if there's something you know you'd like me to try, I, I I'm up to trying anything as far as these engines go. These old BOPs, especially, I love them. I love BOP engines, the Pontiac, Buick, and Olds. Um, Olds being my favorite favorite motor, probably, and, and these are second. Buick, I've only messed with one, but I do have a, a family that uh, my dad. Speaking of learning all this from my dad earlier, um, he had redone a tractor for them that had been sitting in a fence row since 1935 and got that thing running. And now they use it for parades. It was in the paper. And this family also has a, I believe, they told me a 64 or a 65 Buick. Um, a saber or something like that I can't remember exactly what it said but it's a nailhead engine and I guess somebody left it idling and it had an oil leak somebody forgot that they left it idling they ran her out of oil and she seized up so but this family has talked to me about maybe me doing that engine for them getting it going and uh, in my eyes I, I think that that would just be Fantastic! My dad got the family's oldest tractor going, and and I get the family's Buick that they've had since they're a one-owner car. And I, shit like that. That is what I love doing. That was the way my dad was. And no matter what he was doing, he'd drop everything to help someone out, and it gave him a bit of pride to do it. He was a very proud little Irish man, and he was just fantastic and I miss him dearly but I did get a lot of that from him I can tell you there is a <laughs> there is a special place in heaven for people like my dad and my mom that raised me uh, I'm adopted uh, they brought me in of course you know you'd think that being growing up with someone uh, you'd get their mannerisms and that's how it is now there's a <laughs> There is a backstory in the DNA that starts to come out when you're a teenager through, say, oh, I don't know, uh, 35. <laughs> so I'm 46 now, and I finally grew out of that crap. But, uh, you know, I've done a lot, a of, lot of things that I ain't proud of. Got put in situations that weren't necessarily my fault, but my responsibility because I put myself in the position to be in that, you know, and... Uh, my dad stuck by me through everything, everything, and that's why I, that's why I really want to do these things. I want, you know, keep it cheap for people, as cheap as possible. I mean, get me the parts, get me the, the things I need to do it, and if it's something for me, you know, obviously I'll spend hours and hours and hours, but it. it it means a lot to me to put things like this back on the road for people. The next project I have uh, that I'm starting up is for another person in the family. And uh, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to the family, what we're doing. The whole family's helping. And I'm going to make an entire video of that. And, of course, like I've said before, I cannot reveal what it is because the person will know because they'll obviously see these videos. And, uh, but yeah, that's what it's about. I guess I got that pride Irish, you know, that proud Irish from my dad. And even though I'm adopted, that 23 and me thing's pretty awesome because it turns out that I'm almost 90% from the Emerald Isles. Uh, I'm proud of that. Uh, Irish are very hardworking very loyal and noble people and 
my dad was one of them. He was definitely cut from that cloth, and I miss him. This was my second Christmas without him. And you know how many times I was building on this motor that I was like, oh, I could just call dad. But spend as much time with your with your dad and your mom and grandma and grandpa as you can because, you know, almost two years later and I, I don't know. Me and my dad had a great relationship as long as we weren't standing there talking. Because <laughs> we'd get into it. Matter of fact, on this engine, the way he was built, he would say, what are you doing spending all that damn time and money on that? You should be doing this, this, that ain't work, blah, 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 blah. And he'd speak real fast. And, uh, but five minutes later, if I started it up, he'd be like, well, that sounds pretty good. Sound pretty good. Then he'd walk off. That'd be all I'd say, but that's all I needed. That is absolutely all I needed. Just that approval. And that happened with my Cutlass engine. Um, he came over, my dad was dying of cancer, and he came over one day and I had, I had that sucker sitting right here on a different stand right here all set up. And he come over and he says, what's that? And I said, that's my 455. Cause he, I grew up in a 72 Cutlass and he was interested, you know. He wouldn't be, wouldn't let me know, but he was interested. And uh, I had that 455 sitting here. He says, Jesus, that is a that is a gas guzzle motor, boy. You better be ready to put some money in that gas tank. Jesus, cry many sakes. You know, what do you think you're doing? And I didn't say nothing to him. I just grabbed the old start switch and fired her off. And it shook this whole building and shook everything. And he kind of jumped and he looked and he goes, my God, that thing sounds pretty good. And that was it. That was it. And I smiled. A stepmom standing right there and she smiled at me and shook her head and I, I just knew that he was like wow you know my dad was a was a hellion when he was a kid and he he loved this type of stuff he was a mechanic in the in the Air Force during the uh, Korean conflict in Alaska so yeah this thing makes me happy she runs good I can't wait to get her in the car but uh, this is gonna be the end of this be my first one. Uh, I know I'm gonna get hell to dirty your rods, and that ain't how you do it. And you should be using this, this, and this. And you know what? You do it how you want to do it. I've been doing it this way since I was 12, ish. I don't remember. It's everything's a blur. Like I said, I wasn't the. Uh, uh, I had a lot of cocktails when I was a kid. Um, but yeah, do it how you want to do it. I'm just showing you how I do it. And, uh, my next one is, like I said, that this next one I'm starting is just absolutely going to be a nightmare for me because I've never, never touched, never touched them. Never once in my life have I ever worked on what I'm working on next. But thank God I found a motor for this thing. Not too far from here, about 40 minutes away, that's complete, just needs a few things. But even if it doesn't run, it's at least it's complete and I can look at it and go, oh, that's how that goes, you know. But anyway, y'all take care. I'm going to go get that motor, finish tearing down, and cleaning up. God, I made a mess. I made a mess. I got to get this thing ready for band practice. We'll just make them stand in oil pumps and oil pans. And that, uh, I'm going to dump the oil out of this thing, check it out, but I'm pretty sure she's good. I already changed the filter once while I was running it, so she got good everything. So y'all take care. It's Christmas now, so I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Um, on to the next one, man. Take care of yourself.